Thank you.
as you are doing scanning, before we can open the casket, we let our mothers to light the lamp. <coughs> Let's mm, put our palms together and open the prayer. Om Shivaya Arapiranjyadi Tani Perum Karuri Tani Perum Karuri Aru Perinjodi Ulegala Ulegala Tode Kuari Ile Ulavi Nirmani Vendia Ulegala Yeah. 
பொம் இறப்பும் நீங்கள் ஆண்டு வழி இந்த வீர அண்ணமா முடி அவர் மிக தக்கப்படுகின்றோம் அழுதாகப்படுகின்றோம் இந்த உயிர் அழிந்து மரியாமல் குற்றங்கள் செய்து மன்னித்து உன் பாத விருந்துகளை சேர்த்து நற்கதியம் தருவாய் நமச்சிவாய உன் பாதமே போற்றி 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 அருள் பெறும் ஜோதி தனி பெரும் கருணை தனி பெரும் கருணை அருள் பெறும் ஜோதி ஓம் திரு சிற்றும் பலம் விடை தீர்க்கும் திருக்கருங்கள் வாழ்வுக்கு திருவயிறு விக்னேசன் திரு தோற்றும் வாழ்வுக்கு திருவயிறு Gana <laughs> 
Thank you. 
Kalyanithi 
Santuri will be joined by her two grandsons, Aryan and Zion Murthy. It's difficult to sum up someone like Pashima in just a few words. Warm, humble, inviting, all of that and so much more. She lived her life well, and as a result, I've collected so many humble life lessons from her along the way. So I've got to share with you a few things she's taught me over the years. Firstly, to treat everyone with kindness. Whether you knew her as Mrs. Woodley from the market, or her niece, nephew, son or daughter, or just a friend of hers, she made sure that everyone feel, felt equally as loved. She had this infectious, caring energy about her, whether she was making sure you had eaten, or sharing a laugh with you, or was listening to you bent about your day. One couldn't help but feel happiness around her. Nothing fazed her, and she accepted people for who they were. Secondly, it was to always believe in the power of prayer. Every chance I was on a phone call with her, Hatime would remind me to stop worrying about anything that was going wrong and start praying. Everyone, everything would be okay if I just prayed. Her unwavering faith is what kept her going through all of these years. I have many fond memories of going to the temple with her. She also had a habit of picking her hands up in prayer every time we drive past the temple. A simple gesture, but a good reminder that it's not too difficult to include prayer into your daily life. She would bestow her blessings upon people she could have even just met and again, just, just showed us what a genuine, loving human she was. Lastly, she taught us to never stop fighting. The last few months of her life were anything but easy. But she kept pushing through it all. No matter what was thrown at her, she remained determined to get better. I would also recall a story she would tell me from her childhood and from living on the farm in Demet. Life was not easy for her, as you could tell from the stories her battered, hard-working hands would tell, yet you'd never hear her complain. There was always a silver, silver lining. She found joy in the simplest of things. These still aren't enough words to some Fatima, nor will they ever be. Thank you for the memories. 
to being someone that I will always look up to. It has and will always be an honor being your granddaughter. Rest in all Fatima. Dear Fatima, many things I can say about how much I love you and miss you and how I'm glad that you've left me behind. But there is one important thing that must be said. Anamamuki, thank you for your love, your wisdom, your infinite stories and prayers. On behalf of everyone whose lives you've come across, thank you. Thank you for teaching us so much and loving us as you did. My grandmother had many lessons to teach us just by being around her. Firstly, to be kind. Kindness was a key factor in how my Fatima lived her life. To ask how other people were and actively listen to the vast anecdotes people would share. By simply extending an ear, she brought peace to many. Secondly, to be grateful. Her life was never easy, yet you would never know. She would face any hurdle with a determined mindset and a heartfelt prayer. She worked hard. Not to prove anything to anyone, but to return home every day, grateful for the hours that have passed and those that lay ahead. Finally, to believe. Through prayer, my grandmother found solace and guidance. Through prayer, she protected those she knew and loved. Through prayer, she found strength to successfully tackle the obstacles thrown at her. I wish I had a magic wand to bring back time and spend one last moment with you to hug you and to let you know how unbelievably strong you were. If only I had done that before you left, maybe the pain would be less unbearable. Finally though, you can breathe easy. Finally, pardon me, you can breathe without a struggle. Finally, you are home and at eternal peace. I can't thank you enough for being my grandmother. I can't thank you enough for being an incredible human being. I promise to make you proud. Love, your son, Larry. Sayuri, Santuri, Arim, and Zayim, if you take all that your party mark taught you, you will be blessed with a life of endless possibilities, happiness, and successes. I would now like to call upon the Murti family nephews, Firstly, Tamba Nayu. Today, family's friends, obviously, and appreciating praise. It's a sad day for me to come speak on behalf of my late aunt. She was such a charming, loving, caring person, jovial all the time. From the time that I was small, I can remember the quality of that life and how she would care for us. I cannot remember anything bad about my aunt. It was always good in it. And I will not forget, this is the only aunt of mine like I don't know, but she meets somebody, she'll say, hello, my child. She'll hug you, she'll kiss you. It's very, very hard to find people of that kind. My aunt worked very, very hard. I remember when we stayed in Elkrest, and then we moved to Damat farming. Both my aunt and my uncle were very, very hard in building themselves up and improving themselves. It was not easy living on a farm. In those days, we had no water lights. So it was a tough life, but they never found that town. I can remember when my aunt and uncle came home and the time we were living in Sawati. They came and said, spoke to my dad and mom, proposal that they are thinking of buying this whole inventory market and they just came for some advice. My mom and dad were very encouraging people and they always tell you the good. 
So my dad said, go ahead. If you want any help, good. With my mom as to the side, I'll give you all the help you need. Do not turn back and see. And my aunt said, you know what? Thanks so much for giving us an offer, and we'll definitely go ahead. Then my aunt and uncle started a store with vegetables and fruits, which was not easy to be a housewife, just look at the farm, they were still farming, and go and spend some time in the market. They did very well, and then my uncle got into also prayer stops and was selling prayer stops. And then he, he ventured out in his business in opening up the floors. And I, and I know, and I, most of the people that know the qualities of my aunt, but she was mostly in the shop. My uncle, he should go and buy the flowers and he should also go to the market that they are outside on Fridays and Saturday. They should, they should be there at the store with the helper that she had. And I was so impressed one day when I was there visiting in the store because a few people came to buy flowers. She actually spoke to them. She, she was a very good salesperson, I would say. And then she would tell them, these are the price of the flowers that you tell us you know, what you want, and I will guide you and take you through and go to the bouquets. So once the florist business was flourishing, with my aunt and uncle, they downsized on the fruit and veg and went more on to the flower business. As I say, my aunt was a very, very hard working person, job or rather destroy her. She was very brave and courageous. I remember when I was young and my aunt and uncle would go to the market, I'm not sure they retired or what they were in an accident. And then we should come to the market so and stick prayer or stuffs in the market. And the first thing what my mom would say, we need to go to the hospital. I said, okay, no problem. We'll just go to our auntie's house. I'm going to auntie's house, we'll just go there, refresh ourselves and go to visit my auntie. The first thing when I went and saw my auntie, it was very, very sh shocking and surprised. You know, the attraction from the forehead going down and up to her. That memory of me seeing my auntie will never get out of me. But what I'm trying to say to you that she had the courage, the bravery, and she was so strong. She came out of it. And she came back to a normal person doing her activities without any fear. With the support of my uncle, the children, she became so good in, that, in all the activities that you know, you cannot explain. And I don't know my aunt of any bad habits. She, as I said, she was always laughing, smiling, people. And just lately when I visited her, I was talking to my mama in the lounge and trying to comfort him. And then my aunt heard my voice. And she told the helper, please go tell my, uh, my elder sister's son to come to here, to come and speak to him. So anyway, the helper came, she said, you know what, your auntie called you, she to speak to you. So I went to him, and then she said, hello, my child. I was this thing of you, and God has just sent you here. And you have made my day. I said, no, I always come and visit you and I see you. And you look so well now and you're on your way to recovery. She said, yes, I am going to be recovered. And so I say, she was so strong, very courageous, never gave up with all the problems that she shared. So I will never forget my aunt from the day of the 
and the farm in Savoti. And my uncle and telling me, Raja was known, there was a tree at Alvas. When he comes to the holiday time, my mama would say, what's your city? He told come, let's go. Let's go greet the vegetables and take to the market. And they all would come and be there. But my mom and dad, my, aunt, my mama and auntie, they had such a good relationship. It was very inseparable. I think the only time it became separable is when my dad passed away and my mom passed away. So they were there all the time for us. And my auntie, outstanding person with the qualities. My ending of our death, it is also my condolences and sympathies from my brother Reggie, who's in Australia. He couldn't make it. And he said, please, let's convey this to us to the children and we pray that Uncle Phil and Raymond will take this. It's going to be a lot of pain, but he must be strong and carry on with life as this is not the end of life. I am saying we pray with my arm, so we must rest in peace, guide us through our lives, and we will meet one day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tama, for those kind words of tribute to Rama. And I call upon Yoganathan Naidu. long enough, my dear aunt. You were brave, strong, and tough. The battle you fought was long and hard, but it was okay to let go and let in God. It hurt all of us when you left that day. It left us brokenhearted with nothing to say. We don't want to be selfish and say, please don't go because we did not want to hurt or grieve. We know in our hearts you are in a better place, but we swear we are going to miss your beautiful face. 
we are going to miss the talks we had and the stories we would tell that would make us laugh. God just needed you to come home. Yes, we know it was and it, we know it has made your family soul. You will always be remembered every single day from the smile on your face to the things you would say. You have taken your space in heaven, right where you belong, and right up there with your loved ones. Yes, we all know that we need to stay strong, but through our family, your memories will live on. You don't need to fight anymore. You let go and let it go. While you were here on earth, you did your job. You did your part to keep the family together. That's why you will remain in our hearts forever. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. So those kind words and lots of memories and brought back lots of memories for me as well on our good days in the mat. I'd now like to call upon Linganad Modli, son of our late Mrs. Modli, to pay tribute. Hi, good day everyone. Uh, when I was asked to speak today, I didn't really know what to say. Just scroll down a few words. So please bear with Um, you are a wife, mother, grandmother, daughter, sister, aunt, friendly neighbor, friend to many. Click. And you have given us amazing and wonderful memory. Sorry. Mom would be so happy to see all of you here. Because uh, family and friends meant everything to her. Of course, <laughs> that behind the prayer, as God was most important in her life, and words, Om Namah Shivaya, was like even easier than breathing to <laughs> Mom and our mom, we will treasure. 
We are grateful and honored to be called your children. Thank you. We love you. Thank you, Raj. It is difficult times, but with the comfort of family and friends, we will bear this bereavement. I would like to acknowledge and say thank you to many family, friends, doctors, and nurses who have cared for Amma during the last few months. Thank you to all of you as well for your support, messages of condolences, warmth, and comfort during this bereavement. To the Karasan Temple, thank you for the use of this facility at such short notice. And also I'd like to say thank you to many service providers who graciously provided their service. Thank you. As we prepare for the final prayer, and to conclude, let's all remember the cherished memories of our Amma. Live by her values, her humility, her simplicity, and her ever-presence. Thank you, Amma, for all your guidance and for sharing your life with us. May you rest in peace forever. To note, the memorial service will be held on Tuesday, the 4th of April, in this very venue, Karasan Temple Hall, commencing at 5 p.m., when supper will be served, and followed by a memorial service at 7 p.m. Thank you once again for your presence. Humble welcomes, namaste, namaskarams to all family members and friends. Those of you that have not yet viewed the face, may come forward. If you just join us, we will come forward to view your face. Lovely. I think I would be failing also in my duty if I did not also pay my heartfelt condolences to the Brief family. I've also known Mother for a short while. A very, very pleasant person. Always had a pleasant smile on her face when we visited her at the, uh, the store in the free market. The news of her passing is a huge blow to us because She's always been generous to the, to, you know, when it came to, uh, when we went for donations for our temple, when we had firewalk and how we need whatever. She was very, very generous, not just her uh, alone. Yeah. The uncle as well. Uncle Modi. For that, I trust, you know, you, Lord Namah Shivaya gives the family and family and friends all the strength to deal with this great loss. And we trust that through the medium of prayer and time, sure may not heal all the wounds, but the, the memories and the uh, tears and the joys and the goodness and the happiness that even your king was sharing this mother, everybody that shared it, will be forever treasured. Okay. I 
Oh 
In the meantime, the six poor brothers can get ready as I allow the families to put the, the love roses on tour. Madhavane Shiva Shankarane Narayana Harivo Paramatma Yentuneni Narayana Harivo Madhavane Shiva Shankarane Narayana Harivo Paramatma Yeturini Narayan Hari Vo Hari Hari Vo Shiva Shankari Vo Kailasa Vasa Vo Vo Namme Shivaya Narayan Hari Ganga Dharame Vo Namme Shivaya Narayan Hari Ganga Dharame Vo Madhavane Shiva Shankarane Narayan Hari Vo This morning's service was rendered by Ravi Gavadan and party of 79 Gravy Road Radio in Chancellor. If you'd like to contact us, you can telephone me on 082 
Thank you. 